Hey there guys, Mark here from Soulfly Concepts and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be looking at lines in ADE. As mentioned in the previous tutorial, ADE will be our focus this time round. Although you can just grab ADE and jump straight in, um, I'll be showing you making custom textures, defining those textures, telling ADE what all the different parts actually are, like all the different lines. Uh, drawing the lines themselves in ADE, I mean, that can be quite tricky if you don't know what you're doing properly. Um, drawing lines well in ADE, so, you know, making things look slightly more accurate. <laughs> uh, I'll be discussing layers, and finally, we'll be exporting to Flight Simulator to see how things look. So, there are two different types of textures uh, most commonly used for lines, uh, line textures themselves. Uh, the first is your horizontal, where your lines run across the image, so sort of from left to right, like in the direction you read. Uh, and the other one is vertical, where the lines run up and down, so up and down. So horizontal, left and right, up and down, vertical. Okay? Basically what horizontal and vertical means in life anyway. So, there is that. Right, so let's jump into making a texture. We're going to be making a horizontal set of lines. So I'm not going to make many, simply because this is a tutorial. I want to try and keep it as short as possible. Right, uh, let's just go click on New. Now remember, in Flight Simulator, everything has to be power of 2. So that means 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. Right, so you want to pick a texture size that's going to conform properly with Flight Simulator. So for FSX, you can go all the way up to 4096. Um, in FS 2004, the highest you can go is 1024. So we're just going to make 512 wide by 1024 high. And this is pixels as well, not, not centimeters. <laughs> right, so we're just going to open up ourselves a little canvas here. And as you can see, it's a nice rectangle, exactly half the width that it is the height. So let's just make our layer a editable layer. And let's add a new layer. Let's make ourselves a couple of lines. So I'm not going to make many, like I said, just, just a couple to sort of demonstrate what we're doing here. Right, so at the top we've got our basic line. At the bottom, well, in the middle, should I say, we've got our sort of line without a backing. There's no any there's no texture on it, it's nothing immaculate. And at the bottom there we've got our edge movement lines. Most commonly found in the UK, not really anywhere else. Right, so we're going to go with this. Now you can fill the entire sheet all the way down to the bottom. You can put as many lines in as you like, like hold short areas, um, dashed lines, white lines, red lines, blue lines, whatever kind of lines you want. Um, I'll actually show you a texture sheet in just a tick here, just to sort of give you an idea of what I mean. But yeah, you can go all the way to the bottom. You can put as many or as few lines in as you like. Um, if you put fewer lines in, then I might suggest making the texture slightly smaller, maybe 512 by 512, just to sort of give people's computers a chance to load a smaller texture. Um, it takes a lot less memory. Right, so we're going to stick with this. We're going to make this texture. We're going to Control Shift and Save. Uh, of course, I say Control Shift and S to save. And uh, we're going to pop it into Textures. And we're going to save it as, well, we're going to save the first one as PNG. We'll just call it um, Lines for Tutorial. Lines for Tutorial. Nice. That's a PNG. So save that. Now Control Shift and S again. And save it as a BMP. And we'll just call it Lines for Tutorial. Go. And just save it as a 24-bit image. Right, so we've now got two copies of that. Just go ahead and close Photoshop. Open up our textures folder in pictures here. Where are we? Textures, line, la line, 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 line. Lines for tutorial BMP. Right, just pop that into Photoshop. So we've got a version of it inside Photoshop we can use. You'll see why later. And we're going to go ahead and copy the 24-bit image. So we just copy it. Open up a new instance of that. Pop it into local disk. The one MSFS. 
FS Design Tools, the version you're working with, for me it's 1.75, and we want to go into here, right, to look at it. So we've got textures. Inside textures, you have your DXTs or your BDS textures. Same goes for textures base and textures base non mipped. So all of these have DXT or BDS textures in. Textures DPY is textures underscore display. Now, this is what you see when um, you're using ADE. This is what comes up in the display. Now, in here, I can show you an example of textures. Um, let's have a look here. Do I have a line sheet? We do. Okay. See here that I've done exactly the same thing as before. It's just um, double height than it is width. And you can see my lines go all the way from the top all the way to the bottom. I've added as much detail as I like. I like to put a little background behind mine just to give it a... Um, like a sense of realism basically, just to see what it would look like inside an actual airport, this is basically what it would look like. Um, that's what I like to do, you don't have to do it, you can leave them blank like I have done here, but um, it is entirely your choice. Okay, so that's an example of line sheets. Right, so we now have our display texture inside the DPY folder. We need to open up DXT BMP. I'll pop a link for this tool in the description because it can be a little bit tricky to download if you try searching for it on your own. And we, what we want to do is copy the, or just say move the .png image into there. And you can see it applies the alpha map already for us. We've got the white areas where the lines are and the black where the alpha is over here. So just go ahead and file, save as, and I like to use extended BMPs. You can go for DXT if you, I mean a BDS if you like. So let's go DXT3, save, overwrite, and that will just overwrite the other one we already have in there, which is here. So if we just copy that, the DXT image, and pop it in there, we have lines for tutorial. Right, so our texture is technically imported into ADE now. We have nothing to worry about. It's inside ADE. There is a couple of more um, tweaks that you need to do, hence why I'm leaving Photoshop open. Don't close your image editing tool unless you have a way to count pixels, because you know I find this is the easiest way for me. So let's go into ADA. I've got Newcastle Airport on the screen here. As you can see, I've already added a couple of um, ground poly lines, but I'm going to show you how to define the textures first. So Save your image as PNG and save a copy as a BMP. Place the BMP and uh, place the BMP image into the textures DPY folder, and place your DXT or DDS image into the textures folder inside ADE main folder. When you've got ADE open, go to Tools and click on GP Texture Editor or Ground Poly Texture Editor, and this little dialog will open here. Now, at first, this can be kind of mysterious because people just look at it and go, oh, well, you know, every, everything's already done. But if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the lines that you've just put in here. It says lines for tutorial in brackets, no def, which means it's not defined. There's no definitions. Now, when you click on no def, you get a couple of options pop up. I just leave these at zero. I just leave this where it is, I just leave it at default, 55 in list, feet, meters, doesn't matter, uniform, I just leave it as no. So what you want to do is you want to type in the name of the line, so the first one is taxiway. Center. And what orientations are the lines in? Well they go across the screen, so horizontal. Now, I need Photoshop. So the start pixel for this is how high the pixels are when the line gets recognized as being part of the texture. So it will ignore the rest of the texture until you get to this point. So if we just copy and then go for new, we get to see it's 983 high. And if we just do this, just get a rough idea of how wide the texture is. 39, so 983. 
Okay, so we've got our numbers in there now, and position in list. Well, this is the first texture on the sheet, so position one. Click back where it says width slash height, and press update definition files. We have one texture. Well, we have one line out of one texture. Just click your little drop down and click on none, and uh, name the second one. So the second one is. Center, no border. It's horizontal. And let's do it again. So from the bottom corner all the way up until you get to where you want to be on your line. Control C, Control N, and we have 937. By 21. Position in list 2. Update definition files. Click back on none and type in a name, so taxiway edge. Okay, let's do the same thing again. Control C, Control N. 8.17 by 69 7 69 make sure you click vertical and position in list 3 click back on 69 and update definition files Right, we can now close that because we've defined all of the textures inside there. We can now test to see if they're properly orientated and everything. Um, what you might want to do is you might want to define one, go and check to make sure you've got the definition file right, uh, to make sure everything is correct, because if you're off on one, you're going to be off on the rest. I don't know what needs to be here, but we're just going to go ahead and use our ground polygons and we're going to go and draw a parking area. Now drawing in ADE is as simple as click and drag or you know, click, move, click, move. You don't have to drag, so for example, I'm not dragging now, I'm just moving the mouse freely. I can click here, I can click here, click here, 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 here. Here, I can click anywhere I like, and I can also click and hold to drag. And if you want it to be more accurate, you can do it like that as well, but just remember to click when you're finished positioning. So let go of the mouse button and click it once to add your point. Okay? And double click right at the end to add your final point. So that's basically how you draw in ADE. Now, once you've done and selected everything here, so just say one meter wide, um, what texture we're going to use, let's just pick a random one. Where are we? White clean edge, that'll do. Right, so I've just picked a random texture. Now, drawing well in ADE can come with a couple of downsides. Like, you can only zoom in so far in ADE, you can't zoom in as far as you would like. Sure, you're pretty close, but um, sometimes you just want to zoom in a little bit further to make things a bit easier for yourself. Uh, ADE only has a certain amount of zoom you can have. So let's go over here and let's draw ourselves a line. Let's say, oh actually. Let's go over there, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw ourselves a taxiway first. So, go like that, and then like that. File, where is it? View, parking, and taxiways. Right now, in ADE, it draws the generic AFCAD style lines, and these will transfer over to, into FSX, and because FSX knows where to put them, it will generate them on top of the scenery for you. So the lines will be FSX default and they will never look this perfect. 
regardless. Like it will never look that perfect. And if you get things like this, you won't you won't really get that. I could just bring that back on there. Like you won't really get that if as as long as you delete points, you won't you won't get things like that. So just delete that. You can see what I mean. Right. But in um ADA it will draw its own taxiway lines just to give you a sense of where they would be inside the scenery. They will never turn out as accurate or as sharp as this and if you've got any texture packages things like that then sometimes they may even turn out a lot different. So um, if you can turn them off if you wanted to like you could uh, tell ADE not, not to generate lines for that particular piece of taxiway. Now if we were to use our ground polygon tool we could just go ahead and follow these lines just by clicking in the centers. Now the problem with things like this is at some point you are going to need to improvise. You are going to need to use your own head and I've noticed whenever that happens things never look as good as they wanted to. So yeah, that looks fine. Let's just say it's general line width, 0.5. Let's go new lines HD. Let's get a center line. And there we have it. So that looks okay, but if you zoom in on this, you can still see the edge looks kind of jaggedy. And you're not really going to get away from that that much. Like It's always going to be slightly jaggedy, depending on how many points the curve has. But um, you can add more points if necessary. You can delete points by clicking on them. So if we wanted we could have this line you know make a very sharp straight turn but we can add as many points as we like. So do that and we can now move them individually. So moving individual points can have its benefits, it can also have its downsides. So what I like to do is I like to use helper shapes. Now these come in real use sometimes. They they really do. Click on add helper shape and we go for a circle. Just leave it at default size. You don't need to change it too much. Right? You can just line up the helper shape. And these don't get drawn into the scenery when you come to compile, so you can leave them there if you like. But you can follow the helper shape round using the ground polygon line, and it will give you more unique looking curves. It will give you more realistic and more flowing curves. So say if we just start here, and we zoom in nice and far. Get it to the top there, just so I can just about see the X and we're just going to go as close as we can and there we are, look at that nice flowing curve looks quite nice actually center line there we are now if I was to delete that helper shape, you can see that curve is almost perfect. So that's how you draw well in ADE. Now, say for example this particular curve was part of a conjoining taxiway. Say, they were to, say if this line was to continue forward or splurge off in this direction, then we can add another helper shape to do that, but I'm just going to show you quickly how you can layer the lines properly. Now, if we were to go back on to the actual line itself, you can see it's layer 24, it's one meter wide. So, layer 24. What is layer 24? Well, in ADE, it defaults at layer 24, I believe. That's its default layer. Default drawing layer. Layer 20. Um, before I get too far ahead of myself, in Flight Simulator, it's best to go up in fours. Um, I have. No idea why, I won't lie to you, I have no clue as to why, but um, I have been taught many many times, I've been told many many times, that if you go up in fours, 
you stay out of trouble. Flight Simulator generates every single layer drawn in force. Like, if the layer is layer 12, it will draw layer 12. It will draw layer 13, but not very well. I don't know why. I do not know why. So if you go for layer 16, it will draw that with no problems. I, I, I really do not know why. But, yeah. So we're going to go be going in multiples of 4. We're going to be using the 4 times table, our good old friend. So, we can use anything from layer 5 to layer 62. Right? Remember that. Layer 5 to layer 62. Now, what I like to do is I like to use layer 24 as my default layer. I use anything below that, so layer 16, layer 20, is anything below that. I don't like using layer 16 very much because simply... Um, I tend to put higher levels of detail on, on layer 16. Layer 12 is my detail layer. Layer 16 upwards are my lines, but I like to put higher levels of detail on layer 16. That's just me. You might be different. So let's discuss these layers, shall we? Layer 24. This is where our default line is, so let's just leave that there. Now, if I was to draw another line, went off this way here, for example, on layer 24, where they converge in the middle, you'll notice flickering. Like, they will be, like, fighting for position. It's like, I'm above you, no, I'm above you. <laughs> and these lines will flicker, like, right on the convergence point. So the best thing to do is to draw one of your lines either lower or higher than this. So say if we was to do that, right, just do it quickly to show you, Let's say if we do that, we don't want it at layer 24, we want it either lower or higher, so let's say layer 20. It's a meter wide. It's that touch there, center line, there we go. Right, and this inside Flight Sim, um, even though there's a bit of an issue there, haven't been very accurate, but inside Flight Sim, this layer will now be drawn priorly. Priorly? This layer will now be drawn um, on priority above this one. So this one will be drawn first, and this one will be drawn afterwards. If we have another line coming off of that again, we could say draw that at layer 28. So let's say it goes off this way. Let's see, it does something stupid and goes over the other line. And joins back onto this one. Why not? That is weird. <laughs> right, so layer 28. This line's higher. A meter wide. There we go. So you can do almost anything you like with the ground polygon lines inside ADE as long as the layers complement each other. So if you've got one line, that can be layer 24. Uh, a line coming off of that might be below or above it. So make sure you do change your individual layers to sort of complement the lines that it's attached to. You can't do what you do in SketchUp and have all your lines on one singular layer because unfortunately every single line in here is treated as a separate object. Okay? So everything is treated as a separate object. So yeah, that's how you draw well in ADE and that's how you use layers to your advantage. Finally, we're going to be looking at exporting. I'll just leave that there for you to see. So, in this particular scenery, I have actually gone ahead and created all the parking spaces. I have used ground polygon lines to add in an extra line here and put in the hold short areas as well. Only a couple though, <laughs> not many. So for this, what I want to do is I want to just compile it as I normally would from ADE. So compile airport or click Control C. I've already got it going to a specific folder, so we'll just press compile. And we'll have the compile parameters for the ground polygons. I like to just leave this as they are, simply because uh, I don't like touching anything that I don't understand. But no, um, if you have ARP elevation, that is the elevation of the airport reference point. And um, everything around it curves away gradually. Because as you know, in FlightSimX, the Earth is curved. 
In Flight Sim 2004, the Earth is not curved, however, this box will still pop up. You don't need to worry about anything. Like, you just leave it at ARP elevation and you can click on illumination if you have night textures for them. If you do have night textures, make sure the DXT version or the DDS version of that night texture is in the textures folder with the same ex with the exactly the same name with an underscore LM. Okay? So, for example, we have a texture called lines. Make sure there's another texture in there called lines underscore LM, which has the night version if you want to click on illumination. If you click on that and you have underscore LM in Flight Simulator, once it reaches nighttime, those lines will be black. They will not be any color. They'll, they'll be black because the texture's missing. So Flight Sim can't draw it. Uh, we don't have a night texture, so we're going to skip illumination, and this is not for DX10, so we're going to skip that as well. So just press continue. Now, if for any reason you're going to get this box, if for any reason you get this box, where it says compilation errors. Now, this normally means that one or more of the ground polygons involved are not quite right. Um, it means they're not they're not drawn properly. Just just close it. Just close it. Don't worry about it. Now, the ground polygons that you have recently drawn, right? So there's four, and there's I said four. There's three. There's four. Yeah, so there's four. Now, if you get that error, the best thing to do is to double click on your line and just press on reset. And what that'll do is that'll reset the line to where it was and just once again select the textures. And just do that for all of the ground polygons that you've drawn recently. Um, say if you had compilation errors before, then unfortunately you might have to do it more than once. That's the problem. Um, so, say for example, I just finished doing all of these parking spots. And I get that compilation error. I'm going to have to go through each individual one and reset it. Like, it's really, really time consuming sometimes, but like... Once you get it done, you don't need to do it again. Like once, once it's done once, save the airport. Don't do it again. So the best thing to do is to um, do it in small groups. So say 10 at a time, 10 ground polygons at a time, and then export. If everything goes well, save the airport. Like Control and S, save it, move on, and then do it again. Like to, and then do more ground polygons. So I've reset all three of these. I'm going to go ahead and leave this one here because that one might be the problem, but I'll just leave it. So, Control and C to export. So, just compile. Yes. Uh, we've still got the error. Right, so it's this guy over here. Not that. There we go. So, just reset that. Uh, edge point. There we go. Control and C to compile and go again. Yep. Uh, we're still getting an error, so that's a thing. Still getting an error. I don't know why we're still getting an error. Uh, let's have a look here. Now, if you're still getting an error and you're not too sure where it's coming from, um, the only real thing to do is to sort of try and memorize some some areas. So as you can see here, let's just dump it to Notepad. Okay, let that finish. Right, fifty five oh three nine nine. I've got it on the other screen here. So sorry, you can't see it. Let's have a look here. Fifty five oh three four. I don't have a ground polygon down there. What are you on about? Might be this one actually. Yes, it will be that one. Oh, that is mental, isn't it? A bit upset. A uh, single yellow line. There we go again. Right, so I think I found the error. So, if for any reason that happens and there are continuous errors, there we go, airport compiled. Um, just dump it to notepad and try and find where the latitude is or the longitude is. Like, if you get the number almost roughly right, then you can sort of work out which line it is and you can fix it. Um, sometimes there might be more than one ground polygon that's, like, been corrupt. 
um, so you you will have to look out for them. But yeah, for any reason that that happens, um, you can go ahead and click on the reset button. Uh, go back through all the ones you've done if you don't want to go through you know, trying to find where the actual ground line is. Um, and you can go ahead and just press reset, redefine the line, and go again. If you still get the error, then unfortunately you will have to do the hard work and try and find where the actual problem is. But we have now compiled that scenery. Um, it is now in our scenery folder. So if we just open up our flight sim folder, it's in FSX. And what are we gonna what was it called? Newcastle? There it is, scenery. And there's our guys. Compiled today. 16th of the 5th, 2019 at 18.58. Oh yes. So they're compiled today. Now inside Flight Sim, it will it will be okay. It it'll look fine. Like I'll have no buildings because <laughs> I haven't put them in yet, but um I'm not actually making this scenery because you know, Newcastle's been made by several different developers now. I'm not joining them. But yeah, that's how you make ground lines in ADE. So, I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I hope it hasn't been too long for you. I really do. I'll, I do try and edit these down to be as short as possible and take as little time out of your day as possible. Um, next up, we'll be designing and creating a helipad for a flight simulator. Um, I noticed a comment on the previous tutorial, someone was talking about a helipad, and I thought to myself, ooh, I've never made a helipad before. Like, well, I have. I've made many. But, like, I've never made a helipad for you guys. Like, I've never actually sort of walked through the steps of how to make one. So we'll be doing that next. Um, as for this tutorial, if you have any problems, go ahead and leave a comment. Um, if you like the video, just leave the thumbs up button. Hit it, hit it hard. Hit it like a, hit it really hard. Like, actually smash it off the screen. And um, just let me know you like the video, basically. Um, <laughs> if you want to, go ahead and hit subscribe button. Um, hit the subscribe button. I can't speak. Hit the, the subscribe button, and uh, you know, become one of my long-term subscription buddies. If uh, if you're feeling really nice, you can always hit the little bell icon, and you'll be notified when a new video comes out. Yeah. If you didn't like the tutorial, if you didn't like it at all, just go ahead and hit the thumbs down button, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon as well. So that way, when a new video comes out, you know to hit the thumbs down on straight away. There you go. I'm trying to help you out. I am doing my job. I am I'm being really, really professional about this. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, so that's Lines in ADE. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Mark from Sawfly Concepts. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.